Guys, welcome back to another Animal Adventures with Jordan. And today we are featuring one of our swine species of uh, animal here at the park, or the Sude family, and that is the African Warthog. Now this young lady here in front of me, her name is Baby. And off in the corner here to my side is her boyfriend, uh, Winston, uh, the Warthog. He's a little bit in the shadows, but he's down in what we call a wallow. Now our warthogs obviously are from Africa and they can get pretty hot. So we supply a wallow over here for them to kind of roll in, coat their bodies with that mud, protect them from uh, sunburn, keep the bugs off of them and help them thermoregulate to keep that temperature nice and cool for that body. Now the warthog here made famous by uh, the Lion King, I guess you could say. And we all know from that show or movie, his name was Pumbaa. Now Pumbaa showed a very uh, friendly uh, uh, nature and our warthogs here, you know, generally they're a pretty easygoing animal. That's because we bottle raise them. But actually, warthogs can be quite ferocious animals and defend their young and also their territories, obviously with that body that they're very well equipped uh, at using. So first things first about our warthogs. You'll notice this body here. They average about three, two and a half to three feet in length from the head back to the rump. And they only stand at about two feet to three feet tall. However, that's a big package and a stout body because their body weight can reach somewhere up about like 100 all the way up to 300 pounds, quite a large animal. Now on their back, you can see a very long, um, I guess almost like a mane in nature, and it's very long hair, but that's really the majority of the hair they have on their body. It's very thin and uh, very bristly. Now that mane, and if you zoom over, you can probably see baby's uh, mohawk there. Very good. Now that mane, uh, it helps them to uh, communicate a little bit. When they're on alert or they're scared or they're running away, that mane will stand right up. And you can tell it's a sense of uh, agitation or concern. Not only does that mane stand up, but also that tail. They have this little tail, well actually not that little, it's about a 10 inches long, that comes down and also when they're alert and they're running away, that tail immediately stands erect up on edge. And as they're running, the other members of their sounder uh, which is what we call a group of uh, warthogs, follows behind them, or their piglets will run behind them, following that mom's tail, especially through the deep or tall grasses, and it's a good visual point for them. Now, I want you to look at what Baby's doing right now. Well, hopefully, she'll do it again here. She's down on her knees, and the reason for that is warthogs uh, are relatively, in proportion, quite tall for other pigs. And what happens is when they want to graze or rut, they actually have to get down on their knees to make better contact with the ground. So quite often we'll observe warthogs down like that when they're grazing or trimming the grass. They are herbivorous. They will sometimes eat, uh, uh, I guess, meat protein, but it's usually of a carcass or insects, things like that. But generally they're a grazer. So they'll graze around and nibble on grasses and things like that. But they also get down on those knees when they're digging their uh, burrows or their holes. Now these big tusks, which we know our warthogs buy, are used for many different things. I've already told you fighting, but before we get into fighting and why, we'll talk about their burrowing behavior. Now these guys with those long, sharp tusks can actually dig themselves farrowing holes or, or, or lounging holes, or they dig right down into the ground and get out of that heat or out of that sun. Now quite often, if they can, they'll take advantage of abandoned holes from aardvarks, another species found in Africa, kind of in that sub-Saharan uh, grassland environment that our warthogs are from. Now in addition to those tusks being used for digging, like I said, they're used for fighting. Now when do warthogs fight? Generally our males will fight when the females come into estrus, when they're ready to breed. Now what happens, like many of our other animals here at the park that we've talked about thus far, is our females and their offspring develop that herd or that sounder. And what happens is that when females come into cycle, when they come into estrus, the males that are living in bachelor groups when they're young, but solitary, solitary when they're older, uh, come into that group, will court the females and then reproduce. Now of course the males will engage in dominance battles to win rights to breeding that female. Now these tusks can be vicious to one another. They can grow to a size of about 10 inches long. So that is the equivalent of this right here. 10 inches on the bottom and another about six, seven, eight, maybe even more inches on the top. It's almost like a scissoring effect in that tusk. And that's really what allows them to really grasp onto things and, and deliver a very serious and painful bite. But in addition, those tusks are razor sharp. One hook of a tusk on a human leg could split it right open. That's how sharp they actually are. And all these tusks actually curve. So if you were to lay a warthog tusk on a table, it wouldn't be able to lay flat. It would actually be curved up, almost like an elephant tusk. 
All right. Now, other neat things about them uh, is, of course, the warts. They're named a warthog. And you see these warts here on the side of their face. Warthogs have two on each side. Now, these glands, uh, excuse me, one on each side, these are glands, all right? And they actually produce a scent through them, and they sweat through them. And quite often, uh, the males, and if you look at our male over there, you can see he's a little bit darker around the eyes. That's because of all that scent glanding that's coming out, all right? All that sweat and so forth. The males quite often are much more muskier and will mark the territories of much more than the females. Now, let's talk about falling in love, warthog love. Now, the gestation on a warthog is about five to six months. And what happens is when mom is ready to give birth, she will kind of distance herself from the other pigs in the group and go into a, a furrowing burrow, okay, where she's gonna produce her young. She goes inside there and she can produce anywhere from two up to eight piglets. Now on average, you get about two to four piglets in a litter or in a, in a group. And uh, what happens is mom stays there for about two weeks nursing them. At about three to four weeks, they emerge and rejoin the group. And even at about five weeks old, they're starting to already nibble on grass while st still nursing on mom. And then at about six months of age, they're completely weaned off their mother. Like I said, the, uh, the offspring will stay within that group for quite some time, but as the males uh, reach maturity, usually about two, three, four years old, they will leave that group, develop those bachelor groups, and then eventually live on, a, on their own uh, as a lone bachelor, a nomadic male, kind of like our giraffes behind me here. I don't know if they're in the yard today, but uh, our warthog exhibit is right in front of our giraffe exhibit. So on that note, I'm going to wrap it up for today. Uh, and, you know, I got to say thank you guys. Uh, this is going to be our last Animal Adventures with Jordan for right now. Just like any other episode or, or series or anything, we need to take a break, restructure, improve what we're doing, and figuring out where to go from here. So all I can tell you is to continue to stay tuned into Animal Adventures with Jordan. Follow our Facebook page and uh, see what we have in store for you next. We're not going away. We're just taking a break. So, again, thank you for your support of me of Animal Adventure, of our animals, and our mission.